The knowledge behind brain trauma in children and adolescents is increasingly advancing, and the way in which we screen and treat is gaining more attention with modern day medical advancements. Children in residential treatment centers are among the highest at risk for past traumatic brain injuries. Routinely, they have lived in many different settings and are at the highest risk for brain trauma due to patterns of reckless and careless behavior. Clinic Care has added neuropsychological testing to the assessment and evaluation process at all of its residential treatment programs. Neuropsychological testing is an integral component of the assessment and treatment of not only brain injury, but also neurological conditions, psychological, and psychiatric disorders. Brain-based assessments and intervention modalities create the secure possibility of improved decision-making, problem-solving, emotional and behavioral regulation for the youth for the rest of their lives. The process of assessment and retraining eliminates non-productive thinking patterns which were possibly created by trauma, AODA, ineffective processing, mood struggles, or anxiety, which, in effect, allows for new opportunities for youth. To best meet a child's behavioral and emotional needs, it's necessary to evaluate how he or she takes in information, processes it, engages it, and is able to understand it. My frequent response, brain function is the seat of all learning, emotions, behaviors, and information processing. The best way to keep young people out of trouble and in control of their lives is to teach them in ways that meet their learning styles, developmental needs, and facilitate effective decision making. Support for this type of intervention is best addressed through the brain. Almost 95% of adjudicated youth have unrecognized brain injuries, learning disabilities, and mental health diagnoses. Many of these youth began demonstrating significant behavioral difficulties by the second and third grade. As the learning becomes less successful, their behaviors escalate and eventually involve them in the judicial system. By the age of 13 years, these same youth are unable to read second grade sight words, add, or spell. These children easily engage in avoidant, class clown, and destructive behaviors that facilitate further alienation in the learning process and increase the likelihood of engagement in delinquent behaviors. What I find with this population are many missed opportunities. In third grade, children begin to do work away from the group, learn and produce more independent work. This is when children realize that they are not learning at the same pace as their peers. This is where the class clowns develop their acts, and avoidance behaviors become a way to deal with not knowing how to learn. Brain research tells us that the development of the frontal lobe, responsible for planning, organizing, problem solving, and decision making, is not complete until the age of 26 years. Youth make impulsive decisions, often the result of current emotions and environment stimulation in the moment. But if we, residential treatment centers, know how the brain functions and processes information, we can provide education, therapy, and support in very efficient and effective modalities to create better understanding and incorporation of the information. Combining the results of the neuropsychological assessment with the many new brain-based interventions, treatment can be individualized to develop specific interventions to support better processing of information and decision-making. These then become lifelong skill sets to support lifelong learning.